Chase. to the Geigel Complex, I should say the jam-packed Geigel Complex for tonight's non-league matchup between Reading High and Simon Gratz. I'm Chris Selmer, and along with me tonight is Vince Natal. Vince, Simon Gratz has had an impressive season at 23-0 and has played some impressive teams along the way. Yeah, Chris, they're ranked number one in USA Today, and they are literally the number one team in the nation. They started off the season with a five-hour road trip to Johnstown where they won the Camber County Memorial Tournament. Next, they went to the Coca-Cola KMOX Shootout in St. Louis, where they snapped a 63-game winning streak of hometown Proviso East. Then they went back to the western part of Pennsylvania to win the Latrobe Rotary Invitational in mid-December and celebrated the holiday seasons by winning the Beach Ball Classic in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Just two weeks ago, they captured the Charm City Classic in Baltimore, and that brings them up to 23-0, Chris, right here in the Geigel Complex. I'm pumped. I'm pumped, too. Reading comes in on a, riding a seven-game win streak. Last night they beat Daniel Boone with an impressive win, but there was one thing that wasn't too impressive. It was uh, Robbie Pollard got hurt in the second half of that game, Vince. Yeah, Coach Miller, that's one thing he really didn't want to see, especially against Daniel Boone. Not really a strong team in Division Two play. He really didn't want to see. He really didn't want to see him get hurt, especially tonight. 
playing Simon Gratz, the number one team in the nation, and he overtreaded his left ankle, which was the ankle he broke right before the season began. There's another thing I don't think Coach Miller really wants to see tonight, and that's a 6'11", number one recruit in the nation, Rashid Wallace. Yeah, Chris, you say 6'11", with that wingspan, he's about 7'7", seven, seven underneath the boards under there. Rashid Wallace averages 13.4 points a game. That doesn't sound like the number one player in the country, but the kid loves to play defense. He averages just under nine blocks a game, and he, that's something that can't be taught, Chris. He just loves to get in there and block shots and play defense, and he is the best player in the country now. Simon Gratz also has number 22, Jamal Redmond, a number a Division One future recruit. Yeah, Redmond is just also an outstanding player. He averages in the double figures and rebounds and points. You usually see him tonight on the wing or underneath the basket, you know, posting up. When we saw the beginning, Chris, when we saw them warming up, we saw their th most of their big men, including Redmond, Rondell Turner off the bench, backup center, and Wallace, just underneath the basket getting passes, doing their own little post-up moves and a couple slams. Running High is going to have to have a field day from the outside today to, to hang with Simon Gratz. They just don't match up size for size with Gratz. Oh, no way, Chris. They have, um, Simon Gratz, as I said, they love to play defense, and that's just something that can't be taught. That's something that they love to do. Terrell, Terrell Stokes. He's probably the best defender on the team, Simon Gratz, and they're going to have a tough time with him and their full court pressure. But Reading High has a decent pressure themselves. I think if they can apply that pressure well and make their outside shots, they can stay in the game for a little bit. But then, then you'll see the red team come in, a whole different five starting team for Simon Gratz. Okay, Coach Miller is depending on his pressure defense to try to keep Reading in this game. Yeah, that, that's what's going to come down to, Chris. If, if Running High's defense can stop Simon Gratz every once in a while, you can't expect him to stop him every time. But they're going to have to stop him once in a while. But another young man to talk about is Rondell Turner. He's the, he's the highest scoring player on Simon Gratz. He's the backup center for Wallace. He's a transfer, and he made honorable mention at his last school in his all-division school. The thing that's interesting about Simon Gratz, there are five starters you'll see start the game tonight will not end up the game. They're going to bring out a wholesale substitution with five new players in the start of the second half. Yeah, that's called um, that's called Coach Bill Ellerby's red squad, Chris. Sort of like Tulane's posse that comes in and um, if you want to talk college here. But that's just amazing the way they can bring in another five players just to take over the same role as, as their first five players, and they can remain on top and just dominate like they usually do. Okay, you cannot say enough again about Rashi Wallace. He has been, been compared to Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah, and to say somebody's name in the same breath as Wilt Chamberlain is, is an honor as to comparing him. I mean, people are looking ahead to Wallace's future, and it's experts that has been saying that it's not just hearsay, Chris. It's been experts that have seen Chamberlain play in his high school days and seen Wallace, and they see a very much similarity. Wallace has also proven that Division One recruiters are not – just looking for scores, Vince. They're looking for all-around players, and Rashid Wallace is a perfect example of that. Yeah, he's just a great... Another great player is Sean Reds Smith, the point guard for Simon Gratz. He's probably the best point guard in Philadelphia. That's his rank. So they have a lot of role players on that team, Wallace being the defense, the big man inside, and Smith. He doesn't like to score a lot, but, you know, he'll get it done from the outside. The last game, Chris, Sean Smith played... He had two points and 15 assists. So that shows you a little bit of the role playing on Simon Gratz. That last game also, Simon Gratz held their opponent to 18 points. Yeah, the final score was 78-18. I hope we don't see that tonight, Chris. But I'll tell you what, it might be possible. Coach Miller has to be looking for a low-scoring game, trying to, trying to set up the offense, use a half-court offense. You can't get in a run-and-gun matchup with these guys. They're just too good. Definitely they want to... Um, stop Simon Gratz transition game and I talked to coach Mo before the game and he said he'd like the final score to be 10-9 Redding. I don't know if it's going to happen but that's that's coach Miller that's what he hoped. Um, Redding High's only losses has been to Hazleton, Wilson and Academy Park and all those two all two but two of the three games were high scoring games. The Hazleton was 29-24 while they were just while they were just outplayed in the second half of that game. But again, they need to stop the transition of of Simon Gratz, but I don't know if that's possible, Chris. I may be telling fallacies right here. Okay, we're now going to go down to the floor for our starting lineups.
basketball at its best that you want to be a part of it. So rest assured, Robbie Pollard will be in there if he sure can be. Running high and Simon Bratz tonight here on WEDU and running 85 a.m. Stereo. We'll come back with the start of tonight's basketball game right after this. Give me another two, Jeannie. So good evening, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Do it. By the way, later on, we get to a point where we missed all of our sponsors. Good evening and welcome to the Geigel Complex for tonight's non-league matchup between the Bulldogs of Simon Gratz and the Red Knights of Reading. Now let's go down for your starting lineups. First for Simon Gratz, who are coached by Mr. Bill Ellerby. Starting at guard, number 10, Sean Smith. Starting at the other guard, number 12, Terrell Stokes. Starting at forward, number 22, Jamal Redmond. Starting at the other forward, number 33, Alan Watson. And starting at center, number 30, Rashid Wallace. And now for your defending county champion, Reading Red Knights. Reading is coached by Mr. Mike Miller. Starting at guard, number 24, Robbie Pollard. Starting at the other guard, number five, Marvin Encarnacion. Starting at forward, number 32, Charlie Randall. Starting at the other forward, number 54, Jason Klein. And starting at center, number 44, Reed Crick. Now would everyone please rise for the playing of our national anthem, which will be played by the Reading High School Spirit Band. It's time to tip it up. Simon Gratz, the number one team in the nation versus the Reading Red Knights. And I don't know if there's a lot of Reading fans here, Chris, but there's a lot of people to see Rashid Wallace here tonight. Sold out Geigo Complex. I haven't seen the Geigo this pack since the days of Danielle Marshall. Ah, uh, two years ago. Now he's at the mighty halls of UConn playing an outstanding game for them. And Rashi Wass will be the mighty at the mighty halls of Temple Villanova, North Carolina, or Georgetown. He will be deciding in April. And Reed Crick will tip it up with Rashi Wallace. <laughs> this looks sort of a toss-up for the tip, Chris. Anybody man's ball. <laughs> Anybody's ball. <laughs> Crick Wallace tipping it up. There's a surprise. Gratz controls. Stokes controls. Look, they have a high low Inside post going, Wallace. Chris. Sto good defense by Redding. Off. Jamal Redman with the foul. Yeah, Jamal Redman, an incredible leaper for Simon and Gratz can get can get position on any one of Reading players anytime he wants. There's the pressure, Chris. There's that pressure, that, but Reading gets it right back. Encarnacion driving. Yes, he gets, he gets the, the hoop. 
And they're on their feet here at the Geigle as Marvin can trade baskets with Gratz, and they're tied 2-2. Stokes controls inside to Wallace. Smith back out to Stokes. Wallace with the basket. I think they're going to call push on Crick as Wallace was posting up against him. That's a tough call to make, Chris, with such a big player behind you. You really can't do much more than put the body against him, and they're going to call the foul. Running high looks like they're in a 2-3 matchup zone, so they can get three or four people on Wallace as they need. There's Jamal Redmond. He has all four of the Simon and Gratz points. There's Gratz leading the score. Jamal Redmond has four early points. Let's see if Redding can answer. Redding holding the ball as they did against Hazelton and Steelton last year in the division semifinals. Gratz will come out and play him though, Vince. They got the talent. They, here we go. Stokes. He missed, he missed the slam. slam. He missed the slam. We have a frenzy under the basket. I'm off again. We can't get it to fall. And Redding Mill control. Just a great effort. Number 22, Jamal Redmond went for the dunk. And the fans are loving it here in the goggle. They're just loving it, Selmer. Oh, this is this is just unbelievable, Vince. This is pandemonium. The people are going nuts. I'm going nuts. You're going nuts. This is great. Let's see if Redding can answer. They're only down by two with 6.20 left. That Pollard controls, double team, Encarnacion. Breaks the pressure again. Randall should have been a foul call. And Carnacion was pushed heavily by in the back. Randall controls. This Gratz, heavy pressure by Simon the, Gratz. As I said, they just love to play defense, Chris. Look at them run around. They'll get it every opportunity they can of the ball. Randall for three. Yes, he got it. And the goggles going crazy with Randall with a three-pointer. One of the most consistent shooters other than Klein. But there's a steal by Klein. I cannot believe Jason Klein takes it to Wallace and can't get it to fall. Redding is playing unbelievable. Vince, they're up 5-4 with 5.47 left. I cannot believe it. They are playing great, Vince. Neither can I, Chris. Jason Klein with a marvelous steal right after the three-pointer by Eddie Randall. He took it right to Wallace, showed him that he's not afraid to play against the big boys. Redding is not afraid to play. They're coming right at him. They're playing great. And Simon and Gratz, Chris, they never played under this kind of crowd because they play at 3 o'clock at their home and nobody comes to see them play. They get maybe 100 if they're lucky. Stokes with the three-pointer answers Randalls. And now Gratz will take back the lead. Gratz has a 7-5 lead. Stokes just drained that three. There's Randall in the crick. He was fouled. But by number foul 20. by Redmond. Yeah, Redmond got him with the body. He had a clean shot at the ball, but he hit him with the body, and that's a foul in basketball. You'll see Coach Miller do that a lot down there on the Reading bench. He'll bring his players over when his player's on the line, tell them a little bit what they're doing right, because in this kind of game, Chris, you can't afford a lot of mistakes. I mean, very impressed the way Reading's playing right now. They are taking it right inside the loss and then Redmond, and it's very impressive. Yeah, Chris, most teams that play Simon Gratz and stay close just shoot the threes like crazy. Randall did have one, though, as, as Crick struggles from the line like he has all season. But Redding wants to show that they're going to play a little bit inside, too, try to mix it up and get some early fouls on their big men, Redman and Wallace. Okay, let's see if Crick can get this one to four. Looks Cox off the mark. You just can't Wallace afford those, Chris, man. when you get those foul shots. you got to knock everyone down in this kind of a game. Man, when you're playing the number one team in the nation, you've got to start knocking those down. Inside, Wallace with a jumper, count it. Wallace reminds me so much of Danielle Marshall, Chris, the way he doesn't take it inside so much. Danielle would hang around the perimeter and shoot his shots because he knows when he gets to college, he's not going to be the center when he gets to college. He's going to be the shooting forward or the power forward. So he's going to work on his outside shot now. There's that Simon Gratz pressure. Jump ball, running possession. As we said, Chris, these kids just love to play defense. Just watch the hustle, the foot speed, the quickness of the hands. It's just, it's like you're used to seeing Reading defense. This is like 10 times Reading defense. This is just unbelievable. And Carnacion controls, double team. Look how much Stoke, Stokes moves out there. Charlie ran open for the three, passes it up. And Carnacion to climb. There's Robbie Pollard in the corner. He'll take the three off the mark. Redman with the bat rebound. Redman with the strong rebound. Again, though, Randall goes in and challenges for that rebound, letting Stokes know he's not going to get him all easy all night. 
Watson inside, off the glass, off the mark. Randall comes up with a loose ball. I Redding think, controls. I think Redding is really playing respectable now. Chris only down four with 4.09 left in the first They're quarter. They're impressing me, Vince. They look very good. Coach Miller has his troops ready to go to battle tonight, Vince. And look at this. They're just going to hold the ball for a little bit, try to milk the clock a little bit. They did this against Steelton last year and Hazleton this year. Redding has that look in their eyes. They they really believe they have a chance. Well, you got to set Simon Grass yeah, Chris, tonight. You, you got to, or if you come out thinking you're not going to win, you already lose. Exactly. You got to oh, come I out. Know. A lot of teams would come out thinking that, but Redding has not come out thinking that. Coach Miller going for that 10-9 game we were talking about earlier, Vince. Well, he's got, Simon Gratz got, can't score a point for the rest of the game. Gratz not coming out to play him. And Coach, Coach Bill Eller be pointing some instructions out to his players in his usual T-shirt. The big guy coming out to play Robbie Pollard. Wallace up top, and Carnacion controls. There's a backdoor cut by Pollard. Loses control, Wallace comes up with it, but there's a foul called. Yeah, there's, that was a reach in, Chris, definitely. Number 12, Sean, I think. The foul's on Alem Watson, so that's his first, but he did reach in on Marvin as he drove the basket. Number 33. Now Jason Klein will inbound against this awesome pressure of Simon Gratz. Charlie Randall controls. I mean, Chris, most teams that come out against Simon Gratz say, boy, I hope we don't lose by 20 or 30. I hope we only lose by 10. Running comes out and says, we're going to win. We're, we're going to take the lead from you, and we're going to win this ball game. Marvin Encarnacion was so positive talking to me in school in the hallways. He said, we saw Simon and Gratz, they're not so good. And there's Charlie Randall. Charlie with Randall, one of the hot shooters coming in. Last night had 13 points against Daniel Boone. He's been hot lately. They're gonna get him the ball a lot tonight. Charlie Randall has five of Redding's seven points. He's hot. And I think it's continuing over from last night as his game high 13 points. Inside to Wallace. Strong oh. movement. He was fouled. Yeah, Chris, there's no, I don't think there's any way Redding's going to stop that tonight. Wallace can get that any time he wants. The only way Redding's going to have a chance at stopping that is stopping the entry pass into him, and that's not going to be easy. Okay, Wallace will shoot one. I think we have a couple substitutions for Gratz. Um, Brian Samuels, number 20, checks in, and number 21, James Smith, checks in, who's also an all-league football player in the offseason. So he nails that free throw. So all of a sudden, it's a five-point Simon Gratz lead. Still not not bad, Vince. With with two night with two sixteen left, Redding's down by five. I mean, Chris, I don't think you see a lot of teams like this this deep, Chris. Every one of their varsity players is an outstanding athlete and an outstanding player. You can't find those kind of teams. And they around. all get equal amount of minutes too, because That's, they're all so good. The coaching is just tremendous by Bill Ellerby. Recrick up top controls. Nice, nice backdoor cut. Robbie Pollard misses the layup. Well, I think that's a little bit of intimidation, Chris. Robbie can't let that get to him, though. Wallace with a monster slam over Klein. An awesome slam by Wallace, but Mike Miller's trying to tell his kids, don't get intimidated by him. He's a human just like anybody else. He's just a little bit taller. A little bit taught, Vince, that was an unbelievable slam. He just took that over two guys and said, in your face, I'm slamming it home. I mean, that was... ESPN your face. Yeah, that was just... Redding do, not doing a bad job, though, defensively so far. I mean, you got, you got to realize you're playing the number one team in the nation here. This isn't Daniel Boone. No, definitely, by no means. Encarnacion controls with 105 left, Redding down by seven. Ball off Simon Gratz, Redding will keep possession. Off Simon Gratz, Redding keeps possession. Again, that hawking uh, uh, defense by Simon Gratz is just really bothering the Red Knights. Oh, these guys are intense. Redding's used to Redding used to dishing the defense out. Now they got to take it a little bit. And they haven't. They've been doing okay against it. They're not playing bad right now. Klein controls over to Encarnacion. Randall, uh, off the mark. Tough shot by Randall, almost got the fall, and Rashid just pulls down another rebound. Stokes inside to Redmond. Redmond with a nice turnaround jump shot, kissed it off the glass, 
as I said, they have several post-up players, including Wallace Redmond and Rondell Turner. Okay, Simon Gratz starting to pull away a little bit at the end of the first quarter with 20 seconds left, running down 16-7, but they control. Pollard has it over to Randall. Back to Ro Robbie Pollard. 10 seconds left. Ray's gonna have to do something quick. Four seconds left. I don't think they realize how much time's on the clock. And Encarnacion just threw up uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hook shot three from about the top of the shot. key. And it went in. I don't, think he'll get, I don't think he'll get that in regular play, though. Foul number 12, Terrell Stokes. His first Stokes. Ooh, just missed. Simon Gratz. And Simon and Gratz leads Reading at the end of the first quarter by a score of 16-7. to 7. Well, Chris, Reading really isn't playing that bad. No, they're not. They... They play. They had. A, they had an early 5-4 lead. They came out pumped. They're going. They're playing real tough. They're taking it right to Simon Gratz, and I really commend their play up to this point. They're only down by nine. I mean, they're playing the number one team in the nation. I mean, that that just that says it all right there, Vince. Yeah, and and they're distributing the point total very nicely. Redmond with six and Wallace with seven, you know. I mean, they're just doing a great job offensively and defensively on Reading. Reading is not used to this defensive pressure. They're used to giving teams uh, defensive pressure, and they're gonna, they're not playing that bad, Chris, but they're also playing the number one team in the country. Char and for Reading, Charlie Randall has five points, a three-pointer that gave Reading an early 5-4 lead, and Marvin Encarnacion has the other two points with a nice drive early in the game. So Reading not playing that bad. Randall's hot. I think Pollard has to get into the game and not let that miss layup that he had let him make him get down on himself. Yeah, or don't let he can't let the other team intimidate him as Rondell Turner checks into the game. Their leading scorer on Simon Gratz, averaging 17.4 points a game. He's really the big look at this, Chris. Right away they go into him and he gets the hoop and the harm. Rondell Turner, they took it to him as soon as he got into the game. Nice little turnaround, just power the ball right up into, into the basket, and he got fouled by, I believe, Jason Klein. Chris, as I said, there's no way they can stop those moves. The only possible way to stop their big mid is stop the entry pass, and that's just not that easy. It's not easy. And checking into the game for Reading is number four, Shantae Fish Richardson. Yeah, Fish hasn't seen much action lately because Randall's taken his starting role. But he's shown he can get some rebounds underneath. I don't know about tonight, but he can also shoot the outside jump shot. Let's see if Reddy can get something going here, maybe get a few points on the board. Pollard has it. Randall controls back out to Pollard. Encarnacion up top. Pollard controls. Great They're, defense. Again, just awesome There's defense. Smith. Oh, oh watch out, alley-oop action. Rashid Wallace from Sean Smith. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my God, and it, the guy just went nuts after we that. We haven't seen this kind of play since Danielle Marshall, let me tell you, at the at the goggle. Wallace, just such an awesome player. You know they wanted it all the way down the court as, as um, Stokes made the steal and passed it back to Smith out of the corner of his eye. I think he gave a little nod to Wallace, just threw it up there and Wallace just skied for it and jammed it down to the ground. This Gratz team so exciting. Reading playing them tough though. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing the best they can. I mean, you have to commend them. Like they came out here they went right at him. They're still going at him. That's right. And Reading's going to give a full effort. It don't matter what the score ends that, up. That's right. That's still two points, Chris, no matter how it happens. I mean, it's a very forceful two points, but it's still only two points. Reading is only down, you know, what, 13, Chris, with 7.05 left. They, I mean, that's not impossible. If they get a few threes here and there, that's what they're going to have to do. It's that, just the defense is just so awesome. That was a forceful dunk. I wouldn't want to be a rim <laughs> in, in that circumstance. The whole, the whole place just shook and vibrated when it happened. Okay, Pollard controls to Richardson. This defense is just intense. Smith, Stokes, nice steal by Pollard. Yeah, Stokes had with a nice steal, but Pollard got it right back. Re They're going to call number 12, Sean Smith, with a little push on Pollard as his drive in. Number, number 12, Terrell Stokes, his second. 
Okay, Reading will inbound. No, I'm sure Coach Miller said in the locker room, guys, just come out. We're playing the number one team in the nation. Give the best effort you can. And it's that's a non-league yeah, game. And that's all they're doing, Chris. You don't want to get anybody injured on this type of game. Playing the number one team in the country, really the only reason you're playing is for a little bit of maybe experience and respect. There's a nice pass by Shantae to Randall. Here comes Gratt. Sean Smith with the basket. That was Terrell Stokes with a nice steal. Terrell Stokes with a nice steal from Marvin Encarnacion, drove the length of the floor and just laid it in with the right hand. Everybody looking for a dunk, but I don't know if six foot guard uh, sophomore Terrell Stokes could have gave it to him on that. I think he was looking back for Wallace or Turner to come behind him and maybe throw it off a little backboard action slam. Okay, Coach Miller trying to gather his troops, to, trying to gather their, compro their composure. Simon Gratt's team, the defensive intensity is just unbelievable, Vince. Yeah, it's just, it's so it's so hard for Reading to play in this kind of a game, Chris. Even though they're at home, that's probably the only plus for them tonight. I mean, everybody's been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. You know, it's been the big hype. Reading players have handled it well, but now since the game started, the beginning they look good, but really the number one team starting to pull away. Okay, 22-7, Simon Gratz leads Reading with 6.02 left in the second quarter. Pollard controls, top to Randall, over to Pollard. Sam Walker, who just checked into the game. Randall. Sam Walker for three off the mark, and it's out of bounds. That's the shot they went though, Chris. Walker can bury them if he's open a couple times. He missed that one, but He's a constant shooter. He'll make them. With Rashid Walls averaging just over 13 points a game, he only plays a half, Chris. That's so impressive. That is very impressive. Oh! oh! Robbie Pollard went up. Robbie Pollard went up for that rebound, and I think he saw a shadow behind him as Wallace went up with one hand, just palmed it, and stuffed it right over Pollard. That was an unbelievable play by Rashid Wallace. This so, guy is going to be a superstar someday, Vince. He's just so athletic, Chris, as there's a foul on number 44, Rondell Turner, his backup. He's so athletic, he can jump up and sky for those rebounds and stuff it right back in. I'm serious, he reminds me of a Danielle Marshall, Chris, in the way he played. So Wallace making a statement here early at the goggles saying, Hey, you guys want to see slams? I'll show you slams. Randall controls. Pollard. Reading guys start get, getting some shots off Vince. They're not they're they're not getting no shots. And you gotta don't credit you can't disapprove the Reading offense. You gotta just credit the Simon Gratz defense. Oh, I know. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Reading get off some more shots. There's another steal by but he stepped Stoke steps out of bounds. Reading will keep possession. And number 12, Sean Smith. His nickname is Red Smith because I think of that red hair he has down there, Chris. As Jason Klein checks into the game for Reed Crick. So Gratz leads 24-7 with 4.45 left in the second quarter. Okay, Reading controls. Hassan Walker up top to Pollard. Yeah, Chris, I really don't think Reed Crick can be any effect in this game whatsoever because his is usually that 12, 16-foot jumper, which you're just not going to get. They're going to have to shoot the trifecta. Oh, this, this defense, they come after you at all parts of the court. It's so impressive how five guys can bond together and play such good defense. I thought Reading's, de Reading's defense is good. Reading's defense Hassan, is excellent. Yeah, and Hassan Walker just stepped on the out-of-bounds line. He got away the shot he wanted, but... When he took that step back, he hit the out-of-bounds line, and it'll be Gratz ball. Like I was saying, Vince, Redding's defense is great, but this Simon Gratz defense is just unbelievable. Yeah, and they just, all they do, Chris, is to break the red night pressure. They just, pass their, just throw a high ball to Wallace, and he just holds the ball high above his head, and nobody can touch it. Smith controls up top. Inside Again, to in there to Wallace. Turner off the mark. 
gets the foul to go. And Chris, when you talk. Chris, when you talk about a high-low, this is a basic high-low. 6'11", Wallace up high, 6'8", Rondell Turner down low. They, they have either option. As soon as it goes into Wallace, there's a triple team, and Turner's man-to-man -man underneath the basket, and there's nobody who can handle them. This is a second three-point opportunity. And now Wallace will step out. As I said, he does not play the whole game, and Leonard Stewart will check in for him. With 3.52 left, Wall take, Wallace takes an exit to the bench, and I don't think we'll be in seeing him for the rest of the night. Number 40, Leonard Stewart checks into the game for Simon Brown. There's another steal, Chris, just hawking pressure. Smith. There's Stewart. He Inside wants a slammer, Stewart. too. He was basket. fouled by Pollard on the, first, on the first attempt, Chris. Okay, basket didn't count. Foul number 24, Robbie Pollard, his first. Leonard Stewart will shoot two. Yeah, Chris, this just isn't much of a game so far, Chris, because, I mean, this is the number one team in the nation. I mean, they're the greatest team you're going to find if you travel from coast to coast. And Reading, they're a good team in Berks County and maybe a little bit out of that. But really, just not a strong team this year. You know what I mean? They're not dominating the county like they used to. And to come against a, sh a game like this is just tough. There's nobody in Berks County that could even contend. If there's anybody that would have any contention, it would be Redding. Or Wilson, maybe. Or, yeah, or Wilson. But but this this is just... There's another. They're just so big, Chris. They Jason can't get it over. The, the passes just aren't going over them. There's a shot by Hassan Walker. If he keeps shooting them... I said they would fall, and they're starting to fall now, down 17. Let's see if Reddy can make a, a run here. That'd be, that'd be nice to see. Down 27-10 with three minutes left. Let's see if Reddy can get something yeah, going here. Yeah, and there's Rondell Turner again, the leading scorer for Simon Gratz with another turnaround jump jumper. And that, that shot by Walker ended an 18-0 run by Gratz. And they're, on, they're about to be on another one now, I think. Robbie Pollard taking it strong, and he was fouled. He's fouled by Stewart. Yeah, he blocked him. Foul number four. He, he, he cut off the baseline pretty good, Stewart did, but he hit him with the body, and that's a foul in basketball. They'll bring Wallace back in, They want and Michael Blunt will check in also. I think he's just putting him in because the fans are packed here to see Wallace play. Okay, like I said, number one recruit in the nation has checked back into the game, which I thought he, I thought we wouldn't see him tonight. Uh, Coach LRB elects to put him back in the game. Yeah, Chris, as you said, his college selections, Georgetown, Villanova, North Carolina, and Temple. But according to Proposition 48, that accords the three of those four schools out, not including Temple. Temple, the only, he has to score 700 or more which, on the SATs, which he took this past Saturday. Okay, Robbie Pollard made it one out of two from the line. So if he doesn't make 700 on those SATs, which he took this past Saturday, he'll be going to Temple. Jason Klein for three, off the mark. Gratz controls. S Smith pushes it. S inside to Stewart. Klein comes up with the rebound. Klein got away with a little bit of push now on the back of Stewart. That's but, a, but I think they're... That's all right, Vince. Just give him a few pushes. You yeah, I, I mean. think they earned that. They're playing him tough. Klein was open. And Carnacion up top over to Klein. Shante Richardson with the jumper. Yes, Shante Richardson with a great touch from the outside. Not a great three-point shooter, but he takes that step in and he'll nail it a lot. Nice shot by Sean Tay. There's good pressure by Redding, which I haven't seen in a while. Rondell Turner inside, stripped by Klein. And Sean Tay Richardson jumped on Turner's back, and Turner just threw him off like a sack of feathers. Redding takes possession. Now a lot of talking between Sean, Sean Tay Richardson and Rondell Turner. I don't know about me, but I wouldn't be talking to Rondell Turner. He's a big guy. He is a big boy. A lot of these Gratz guys are big boys. And they're going to bring him out to settle him down. Gratz really not known as that kind of team, Chris. They're really, 
more of a subtle team. You know, they love to play, and that's what they like to do. As you see Wallace laughing out there on the court a little bit, I mean, he knows, you know, this, this isn't going to be much of a game, and there's no use for Turner getting a technical or thrown out of the game for this kind of a game. Richardson over to Pollard. Pollard just had his his shot blocked. Here comes Smith. Oh, shot by Stokes. Puts it in with another two on a breakaway. Excuse me, Stokes. Terrell Stokes with the basket. Terrell Strokes is, Stokes is just so quick. He's the best defender on this Gratz team, and you're seeing right now why. All five of these guys are so athletic. I mean, Reading has an athletic team, but this Gratz team is just their, their ability and the way they bonded together is just unbelievable. And it helps when you have the number one player in the nation. Oh, yeah, that, that's always a positive in your... <laughs> but you're right, Chris, the way they bonded together, they're not a selfish team, Chris. They don't care who has the highest points totals. Just like, like Wallace. Wallace doesn't score as much as Turner, but he doesn't care. Watson is fouled in the lane there, Chris. That's a push. I think it's on Shante Richardson, if I'm correct. Yes, it is. I believe that's Shante's first foul. Foul was on number four, Shante Richardson, his first. And now Alan Robinson is on the. Alan, uh, excuse me, Vince. Alan Watson shoots off the mark. Watson dribbles, looks, cocks, fires, count it. One out of two from the line for Watson. And Gratz leads with 24 seconds left in the first half, 32-13. Reading holding for the last shot. You try to maybe cut that lead a little bit before halftime, get something going their way. Let's see if Reading can get a shot before the end Let's of the... Let's see if they can get it off, Chris. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I don't think they will with two seconds. They're swatted from behind by Terrell Stokes. And he's sending Pollard a message, don't bring that stuff out here or inside. And a little words exchanged. Now let's go down to the gym floor where the Reading cheerleaders do their thing.
We're back here at the Geigel Complex with another outstanding performance by the Reading High cheerleaders. And Reading High trails the Simon Gratz Bulldogs by a score of 32 to 13. Things going pretty much the way we assume, but the Gratz just totally dominating the whole the whole show, Chris. Oh yeah, they did, this Gratz team is all they were booked to be. Just a, they're just an amazing assembled team. And Reading, I commend Reading. They played them tough that first half. They did all they could. They gave a great effort. And I'm proud of the Reading High Red Knights. Yeah, they even had a lead there for a little bit, Chris. They were winning five to four in the early going, in the early four or five minutes of the game. That's, but then that's probably more than uh, 20 teams that played Gratz so far can say. So Reading can be proud of themselves. That's right. And as we thought, the number one uh, pick of the nation, Rashid Wallace, leads all scores with 11 points. Chris, he's five for five from the field 100 percent one for one from the line 100 percent is that a number one prospect in the nation number one i think so also also scoring for for the um simon gratz stokes is three for three he has one three-pointer and red jamal redmond has six points um and turner has four for four from the field chris he has he has eight points and he's 100 percent also okay for the Reading Red Knights. Charlie Randall leads all scores with, excuse me, Reading with five points. Hassan Walker has three points. Shante Richardson has two points. And Marvin Encarnacion has two points. Robbie Pollard, 0 from 2 from the floor, but he's 1 from 1 for the line, and he has a point. And that wraps up the Reading scoring scene in the first half. And that's only 13 points because if you add them up, and I think a big factor there is Robbie Pollard only scoring one point. He's our leading scorer. He's the heart of the team out there. He usually turns it on in big games. You haven't seen much of him tonight. Maybe it's the tender left ankle. I couldn't tell you, but he just doesn't seem to be playing. I mean, they are playing a great team, a great defensive team also, and he really hasn't done anything that much on offense, but as we said, I don't think it's the same Robbie Pollard as we saw last night against Daniel Boone, not only because he's playing the number one team in the nation, but I think that ankle might be giving him a little bit of a problem. That's a shame, Vincent, Robbie. That happened to Robbie last night. He's he's such a good player, and I think on a good ankle he could be doing he could be doing a lot more, but I, I'm just commending him for being out there tonight. A lot of guys could have said, Coach Miller, I cannot play tonight. I'm in too much pain. I just can't do it. You know, but Robbie, the competitor, the athlete he is, he went out there. He's a he's a fighter. He's out there playing against the number one team in the nation. I commend him for that. Yeah, Chris. And when you think about the number one team in the nation, he's playing in the Geigel Complex, and there are a lot of scouts here from colleges checking him out. Even though he's down to his four, a lot of scouts here, even from maybe a couple scouts from the NBA in here, Chris, checking this guy out. And for Robbie Pollard to have a good showing it could mean that future scouts see him also. And with this bad ankle, it really upsets him and I think Coach Miller that they won't have the opportunity to see him at 100%. They're, they only scored 13 points in this whole, thir in this whole first half. That would be, that was and Robbie Pollard only has one point. So not really a strong showing by Pollard, but again, a lot of heart from the kid to come out here and even play. Charlie Randall having an outstanding game. He's shooting the three-pointers very well. But again, a lot of, I mean, most of the people in the Skygo complex have come to see one person, and that's Rashid Wallace, and he's lived up to the expectations with some monster dunks in the first half. Oh, Rash Rashid Wallace is just, gr he's great. I, I'm gonna enjoy watching him in college as he prospers because in college, there's gonna be guys that can play up to his level, so he's gonna be playing the whole game and you're really gonna get to see him use his talents for a full 50 minutes in college. And, and I believe the starters are back out on the floor for each team. Uh, except for Redding, there has been a change. Reed Crick is not in the ball game, but Shante Richardson, I think again, Reed Crick's just not gonna be a factor tonight because he can't use his height. No, not tonight, not with the athletes that Gratz has. And Rashi Wallace is in there, Vince. This is a little surprising. Uh, yeah, you'll, you, will, you will see, I think, the Red Squad, as Coach Bill Ellerby likes to call it, come in very soon. Five substitutes off the bench, fresh. You'll see them pretty soon, I think, Chris. Yeah, I think so, too. It's just a little surprise because from what I heard, 
by the second half, you, you usually don't see their five starters, but tonight you have maybe Coach Ellery knowing their the big there's, running high crowd coming. There's one to, one yeah, one there's to. Wallace out top, Chris, showing some pressure that he, I think they're in a man-to-man -man now with Wallace on Pollard, so you'll see him a lot out top. Okay, Pollard will have his hands full with the big guy on him. Let's see what Robbie can do. Robbie controls over to Encarnacion. And Wallace, look at the movement, Chris. Look at the quickness of his feet. He can cover a player like Pollard. He's a center and Pollard's a guard. He's just, his build is just unbelievable. Now it looks like they switched into a zone. Okay. It and looks like they switched into a 2-3 matchup zone, Chris. Okay, let's see what happens. And Carnacion driving. Good drive by Encarnacion, couldn't get it to fall. Strong rebound by Wallace. Yeah, he just ripped it down. And That's what running has to do, Vince, is take shots like that. They'll get something to fall. Wallace inside. Oh, he oh. missed the dunk, and he went down hard, went Chris, down to hard. the floor. Here comes Redding. They have a 5 on 4 Robbie Pollard couldn't get it to fall. Strong move by Robbie. Wallace turned. He thought he, had, he thought he was closer to the rim than he was. He turned around for the monster slam, and he didn't get it. I think Wallace wants it. He's being quadruple teamed, and he's pushed from behind by Klein, I believe. That'll be Klein's second. He's going to get a lot of that, Chris. Everybody who plays him, even up to the college standards because of the zone. You can't play zone in NBA, but you can play zone in college. And they're just going to hawk him like they do, like they do to Shaquille O'Neal. If you see, if you saw when Shaquille O'Neal played in college, they would have three or four guys on him at a time. Now he's in the NBA. It's man to man, and he's just unbelievable. Oh, this this whole Gratch team's unbelievable. Watching off the mark, Klein. No. Oh, we saw that one coming. A nice save by Terrell Stokes. Right to Wallace's hands, and if he comes within three feet of that basket, it's gonna be Dunk City. Oh, what a, what a, oh man, I'm just speechless. This guy's unbelievable, Vince. He shouldn't be in high school. They should have let him skip his senior, junior, and sophomore years of high school and go right to college the way he plays. He's, he's great, great player. Let's see if Redding can answer. And he's really giving the fans here, Chris, a little bit of a show. Shante Richardson gets fouled hard. Good move by Shante. He took it yeah, up strong. Yeah, he was fouled by Alan Watson, who bought the pump fake by Richardson. A nice move. Got cut at the arm. And now he's going to be at the line shooting two. For the basketball is 4179659. So Richardson will go to the line and shoot a pair. Shantae Richardson off the mark on his first foul shot. If you just look at Wallace standing next to, Paul, um, standing next to, I believe that's Hassan Walker. Yeah, Hassan Walker who just checked into the game. He's just towers over him. This whole team just towers. I mean, they, their size is just unbelievable. Their guards and their forwards are all big. Watson, tough move. Good defense by Redding. Watson takes his Yeah, there's a foul on Shantae, and he pushes. There's a technical, technical. on Shantae, I believe. That's just, Chris, that's just not very smart. You're playing the number one team in the nation, Chris. The number one player in the nation. you got to show him a little bit of respect. When something happens like that underneath the boards, it's just not very professional decision to push him, and he'll be, he'll be coming out of the game and read Crickle checking. I mean, that's just a lack of respect for a great player. That's a, that's a shame. Shantae just lost his cool. He's just getting frustrated. This scratch team will make you frustrated. He, Wa Rashid Wallace will come out. Rondell Turner checking back into the game for Simon Gratch. Yeah, as I said, Chris, when, when you used to see players play against Danielle, they used to have great respect for Danielle. And when he made the plays, you know, they would be as amazed as the people and the fans. It's just not a very mature move to push the, a great player like that, even though, you know, you're, you're not playing that well. Your team's losing 35-13. But, you know, they're the number one team in the nation. You can't expect that much. When you push them, it's just very, very unprofessional. Yeah, you just got to give your best effort. And for the most part, Redding has done that. They have done that. Redding's been playing tough. But they're down 35-15 with 4.54 left in the third quarter. And Gratz has possession after that technical foul. 
But there was a foul. Oh, there was a double technical call, Chris. I believe is the call. There's a double technical on Wallace and Shante Richardson. So Wallace had to lead the game and Shante had to lead the game. And now Robbie Pollard will shoot the two technicals and for Redding. And Robbie just sunk his first. Robbie Pollard. A very interesting call by the refs. And Robbie can't get the second to fall in and out. Okay, excuse me, Redding will inbound after that double technical foul. Randall controls, 35-14, 4.50 left, third quarter. Redding playing the number one team in the nation, Simon Gratz. Pollard controls, down to Crick. Crick double team, Saab Walker. We're gonna call a foul on Alan Watson with the body as Hassan Walker made a nice cut to the basket, Reed Crick saw him, and then the block by Alan Watson. Foul number 33, Alan Watson, his third. Okay, running on down under the basket, Vince Klein. Long pass to Randall. Klein's used to catching them, Vince, in football, plays for the Red Knights. Very good tight end. Okay, Hassan Walker controls. Hassan Walker's a guy that can spark Redding. Yeah, he really is a nice touch from the three-point line. There, there it is. is. Oh, nice dish. Pollard. Oh, walked just off the walk. front of the rim. Looked good from up here, Chris. He just left it a little bit short. Okay, good shot by Pollard, though. Had the shot. He took it. Ooh. Jamal Redmond. Jamal Redmond, just an awesome touch from the top of the key to bang a three-pointer down. And Gratz leads 38-14, 3.50 left in the third quarter. And that's Redmond's ninth point. That Redmond's a real good player, Vince. Yeah, he's outstanding, Chris. He's getting Division I looks along with Wallace. He deserves them. A lot of these guys deserve it. Nice move by Reed Crick on the baseline. He's a lefty, so no surprise he shot that with the left hand, but he just laid it in nicely. Good touch. Beautiful move by Reed Crick. Rondell Turner with a shot off Gets his own balls. rebound. He, he got he, he got swatted in the face by Crick who went up for the block. I'm sure you know it was very it wasn't intentional at all. He just went to block the shot, but unfortunately the follow through hit Turner in the nose and he made the basket though. That's what counts. Exactly. But this running team playing tough, hanging tough with the number one team in the nation. Nice touch by Turner. He has a nice shot, Vince. Yeah, Chris, I don't think you'll see Wallace for the rest of the night. No, I th that's it for number one recruit in the nation. He, he'll take he'll take a breather. So I hope you tape this <laughs> so you can see it over and over again because yeah. that's, I think, all you're going to see tonight. Wow, Randall with an awesome move out of the top of the well, out of the top of the key between his legs and just banged a three-pointer. He can shoot the three, Chris. Nice shot. That's that's Randall's second three-pointer of the night. He has eight points and he leads Redding. Stokes with a pump fake. Smith off the mark. Redding putting together a little run. They just scored five straight points. Klein looking for. Probably eight, because they'll probably shoot a three-pointer. Robbie here. Pollard oh, takes nice move. Oh, and he's rejected oh. by Turner. Uh -oh. And here they come. Nice, nice, nice defense by Stepped Randall. Out of bounds, though. Great hustle by Randall, though, stopping the transition. I think they were looking from Stokes to Smith to um, Turner for the slam. Co Coach Ellerby, you know, making us look bad here, Vince. He put Rashid Wallace in again. I'm not I'm saying it ever again. Uh -huh. Just forget it. He's back in. Good defense by Crick. Got him, got Wallace's face the best he could. Wallace took a tough sh turnaround shot and he missed it. Running controls. Sam Walker to Crick. Wallace. Wallace plays such a, look at his intensity on defense. Five second call on Reed Crick. He's not really a ball handler out there. That's why they had Richardson out there earlier on. Now Richardson will come back in because they need the ball handling, Chris. There's nothing wrong with Reed Crick, you know, he but he's usually the big man, you know, he but he's usually the big man role and he knew that before he came to this game that he wasn't going to get a lot of playing time because he's he's a big man, he's a baseline shooter and he's, you're not going to get that in this type of game. Turner with a turnaround, count it. Turner with a turnaround. 
A nice job, the leading scorer for Simon and Gratz, averaging 17.4 shots a game. He's also a transfer, Chris, and he was honorable mention in his division in his last school. He's a good player, man. He he's a real good player. I saw Walker for three. Walker off the burnt. Wallace just rips down the rebound. Long pass to Stokes. Oh, nice. Nice dish to Redman, and he'll put it in for the deuce. So Rashid Wallace looking a little bit like Joe Montana at the other end. Long pass to Stokes, and then right back to uh, Redman. Maybe a little bit like Troy Aikman there, Vince, but that's all right. We get, we get the point. Nice pass by Wallace, and he gets the assist on that one. Hassan Walker. Great, great move by Has Hassan Walker to pump fake. Good steal by Redding. Klein gets a hold of it. I really commend Redding's play tonight. They are hanging tough. They just have that no quit attitude, and that's that's just great to see. Pollard with a nice move. And it's just a wild shot by Pollard, hoping for the foul, and he wasn't, and it'll be Gratz ball. But a nice move earlier by Hassan Walker to pump fake and get Redmond in the air and bury the jumper. Number five, Marvin Encarnacion checking back into the game for Redmond. Chris, I'm really surprised that you haven't seen Marvin play this whole game because of his intense defense and his ball handling. That, that surprised me too. He's been getting a lot of playing time lately. There's the lob to Wallace again to break the pressure. Smith controls. Over to Stokes. 45-21, 27 seconds left in the third quarter. I believe Gratz will shot, uh, uh, say for one shot. Yeah, I believe so too. I'd have to agree with that, Mitch. Smith inside to Wallace, over so, to Redmond. As long as Coach Elberly doesn't make us look bad again. No, I don't, yeah, we don't want to say too much. Richardson with the foul, playing Wallace tough. Richardson's definitely not intimidated. Foul number four, Shantae Richardson, his third. Ten seconds left. And Klein and Turner having a few words exchanged. Just Turner giving a commending job on defense as he turns around for the jump shot. Here comes Encarnacion, Hassan Walker. Yes, a great move by Hassan Walker to end the third quarter as Redding is down 22 at the end of the third quarter. Hassan Walker with a nice reverse layup as the outlet for Marvin Encarnacion, and they cut the lead to 22 going into the fourth quarter. Not a bad place to be against the number one team in the nation. And you know something, Vince? All their starters are, are in, Vince. This, we're going into the fourth quarter, and all their starters are in, so Redding's doing a decent job tonight. Yeah, Chris, I mean, they're playing probably the best you can against this team, um, according to Coach Mike Miller. I mean, he said, we're just going to try to hang with them, Chris. You know, I mean, if we win, it'd be awesome, but... Uh, it's pretty obvious now that they're not going to win. They just want to stay close, you know, and show that they can play basketball here in Reading. The winning number for tonight's basketball is... So Reading's going to look at the play a little bit better defense here in this fourth quarter. They're really allowing a lot of shots to go up by Turner and Wallace underneath. Really Stokes and Smith, as I said, they're more of role players. They don't like to shoot a lot. They'll shoot the three-pointer if they have it, but they're mainly defensive and ball handling. I mean Stokes and Smith. Stokes at six foot and Smith at, I believe, 5'10". They're not small people out there um, in the press jumping up and down in your face. Okay, Gratz starts the fourth quarter with all their starters in again. Stokes off the mark. Klein comes up with the rebound. Here comes Redding. And Carnacion controls. Sam Walker giving Redding a spark in the third quarter at five points. Klein calling for the ball in the corner. There's Hassan off the mark. Richardson fighting in there for the rebound. And they say Klein stepped on the line. Good call by the official. He's right there to make that call. Klein stepped on the line to save it. And out of bounds, Gratz ball. Coach Miller making a smart move by taking Pollard out. This is a non-league game. They have a Tuesday, they play Muhlenberg in a league game. Which oh, is great cool. swat by Jason Klein. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, That's Chris. okay. That was a great swat by Klein. Like I was saying, they play Muhlenberg on Tuesday night. That's a key game more than this. Yeah, they really need Pollard to be 100%, and right now he isn't. Uh-oh, look for the big man in the middle, Turner. 
but Smith lo Stokes lost it out of bounds. Excuse me. Tonight's game will be aired on Channel. But again, a good move to take Pollard out on that ginger ankle. He's not walking very steady on that ankle. He needs to take him out and give him a little bit of a breather and just let him relax for the rest of the night, knowing that he played a pretty good game against this team. Okay, Randall. Over to Klein. Chris, I'm, Chris, I'm really surprised to see Wallace still in this game. So am I. Coach LRB just surprising us. So I'm sure he's surprising the 3,000 jam-packed people at the Geigle, too. Quick, nice, nice pump move. Fake. Pump fakes Wallace and gets the foul on Wallace. Good, good move by Reed Crick. He knows Rashid loves to block shots. Give him a couple pump fakes, get him up in the air, challenge him right to the basket, and you'll get a foul called on Wallace. So Reed Crick showing that he's not afraid either, and he knows a little bit about Wallace, knowing that he, how he loves the block shot. That was a nice move by Crick, and he shoots his first foul shot and count it. 45-24 with 6.31 left in the fourth quarter. I like to see Redding with a little mini run at the end of this game. Get, get a little bit closer, Chris. And Turner rips down the rebound. Stokes over to Smith inside to Wallace. He's triple team. And he oh, what a dunk by Rashid Wallace over about the whole team of Redding. He went through every player to get to that dunk and over Crick to end it. Oh, he's just so athletic. Crick said Wallace. That was a tough shot, but Crick took the shot. It was a tough one. He took it. And he it was airballed off the, it. Yeah, it was off the mark, but that's all right. It was a good shot by Crick. Off the mark. Rondell Turner rips down the rebound, and he was fouled. Yeah, Turner grabbed a strong rebound there, and he was fouled, I think, by... Number five, Marvin Encarnacion with the reach. And Redding's gonna take a timeout to talk to see how they're gonna get a little bit closer here at the last 5.51 of the game. If you're the Gratz coach, you gotta be pleased with the way they played tonight. They're really, they're the number one team in the nation. They played like it. Wallace with some monster dunks, some nice turnaround jump shots. Turner, his usual night, some nice turnaround jump shots. But if you're the Redding coach, Mike Miller, Chris, you gotta be happy with the way they played also. Gotta be happy, they're, they hustled all night. 5.51 left, they're down by 23, they're still hustling. I commend Redding, they're playing great so far. Yeah, Chris, and I think this is just a warm up for, for Redding. They're ready for Wilson again. They lost their only league game, they're 11 and three, six and one in the division, their only loss to Wilson. They're ready for that Wilson Bulldogs to step in to this game. But now they're busy with other Bulldogs. Simon Gratz, number one team in the nation, USA Today, Paul. Bulldogs. The, the, they're Bulldogs, all right, Mitch. Uh, they're a great bunch of players, Sean and Gratz guys. They're going to call a foul. That's his fourth on Shantae, and as Leonard Stewart checks back into the game for Gratz, they went to him right away. They like to do that. They like when they check the player right into the game to go to him. Back into the game for Simon Gratz, number 40, Leonard Stewart. Foul called against Shantae Richardson. Foul call number four. Sean so look for Stewart again, maybe underneath. A nice lob pass. Inside the Rondell Turner. And I think that'll be it for Shante Richardson, Chris. I think that's his fifth. Foul number He's out of there, yeah. And that wasn't such a good call to be made to get a player fouled out of a game. I mean, Chris, you're playing the greatest team in the country. Give me a break. Come on, man. Checking back into the game for Redding, number 44, Reed Crick. He gave him a little shrug from behind. I don't think that affected Turner's shot. I mean, he's a big guy. I mean, a big, big guy. This guy's going to be heavily recruited also, Vince. He has some good skills inside and outside. He looks, Cox, fires, kaboom, count it. Not many people talk about the Simon Gratz foul shooting, but they're excellent from the foul line because they're big men. They know they're going to get fouled a lot underneath, so they practice those foul shots heavily. His second's up, and it's good. Gratz leads Redding by the score of 49-24 with 5.40 left in the fourth quarter. Again, Redding just playing for respect, Chris. Yep, and they, they have played a respectable game tonight. I'm sure all 3,000 and some, 3,000 and plus, are happy with Redding's performance tonight. Lenard Stewart took the shot. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this running team doesn't want to see a lot of slams on them tonight. They don't like to be slammed on. And they're going to reach for that ball low but when the big men are bringing it up to dunk, just like Stewart found out as he got fouled. And there goes Wallace. 
Number 21, James Smith will check back into the ball game. Now I'm hoping, Chris, that will be the last we see of Rashid Wallace. I'm not promising it's the last we'll see of him. I'm just saying maybe it's the last we'll see of him. Vince, I have to agree with you. We're, we're not telling you it will be the last. We're not promising anything, but it should be the last of Rashid Wallace for tonight. And as always, Chris and I will be selecting the Foot Locker player of the game at the end of this game. Whew. It'll be a toughie. It'll be, it'll be a toughie tonight, Vince. Stewart. Misses the second. Reed Crick comes up with the rebound. Encarnacion driving. Hassan Walker off the mark. James Smith with a nice strong rebound. He's an all league football player for Gratz also. Sean Smith controls. Sean Red Smith, I should say. Stokes. And I don't think Gratz is used to seeing this quick of the hands, Chris, underneath. Stokes thought he had an easy lane to Turner for the dunk, and not so as Klein and Hassan Walker put their hands out and knocked the ball away. Reading's a good defensive team, and they're they're going to make another run. For, they're going to make another run for the county title. They're going to make a run in districts. I mean, they're a good team, but they just don't match up with Simon Gratz, and not many people in this nation do. Nice move by. Oh, Clark, and Crick got rejected. Off by Stewart. Crick took it strong, though. Blunt, Blunt traveled, yeah, that's a walk. Two steps or more is a walk in basketball. Yes, it is, Vince, and he walked. 4.36 left, Simon Gratz, the number one team in the nation, leads Reading by the score of 50 to 24. Randall controls over to Walker, back to Randall. Again, Chris, the Reading players will remember this game for the rest of their lives when they see Wallace playing in the NBA. Jason Klein off the mark. You're exactly right. This is a game. This is a game I remember too, Vince. Yeah, that we both did this game and got to see this man in action. Yes, and it, he's he's really he was really something else. This whole team, not just Washi Was, the whole team was something else. Yeah, with Smith, Stokes, Redmond, Turner, everybody's just playing a great game. And Reed Crick is his fourth foul of the game. Really tough to not to foul out of this game if you're a big man as Shante Richardson has already seen. And Redding, you know, Redding isn't backing down, so they will they will foul. So not really too much they can do, but play them tough, just like they've been doing all game. The reserve seats at the Geigle now starting to exit, but I'll tell you what, Chris, the bleachers are still packed. They are packed. There is no airspace at all between these people. They are jam-packed at the Geigle to watch the number one team in the nation. And like, watch the Redding Red Knights give out a great effort tonight against Simon Gratz. It's like sardines, how tight they're <laughs> packed. Randall, back to Klein. Encarnacion controls. Randall with a deep three, back rim off the mark. And here comes the Gratz. Here comes the Gratz. Inside to Turner. There's a nice move over Reed Crick and he'll be out of the ball game now. A good call by the official to pull on the arm of Stewart. He yeah, turned around me. and banked. Excuse me, Vince, that was Leonard Stewart with the basket. That'll be it for Crick, and as I said, it's really tough for a big man to stay in this game with you have Stewart, Turner, Wallace, Redman. I mean, um, Alan Watson, the big man underneath, just taking over now, and just tough for a big man to stay in the game for Redding. Okay, Leonard Stewart will shoot one. And now Damon Harris checks in for Reading. He's really a nice prosper for Coach Miller to look at. He's only in 10th grade, plays JV, plays outstanding JV. He can really nail the three-pointers we saw earlier on in the JV game. Yeah, Damon Harris and John Renwick, who hasn't checked in. You might see him. He had a great game in the JV game earlier tonight, Vince. They're both great prospects, and they're a big part of the Reading High future. As, JV, as the JV Reading team just crushed, though. Gratz JV team. I believe the score is 78 to 44. Well, that was a great performance by the Reading High JVs and the Reading High varsity. They, they played them tough all night. Rondell Turner just ripped down that rebound. And here comes Gratz inside to Stewart. Again, he's fouled and he makes the shot. Stewart with the basket and he was fouled. Right about now, the Reading players have to be thinking, why foul him anymore? Just let him put the shot up and hope. He misses, and I think that fouls on number 32, Charlie Randall. He has not fouled out, though. 
No, Charlie has not fouled out of the ball game. Two of Reading players already have. And Stewart with a strong performance tonight. He has seven points so far in the game. Okay, Reading controls. Klein for three, off the mark. Tough night shooting for Klein. Yeah, he's usually can nail those three pointers, Chris, but some intense pressure on the night, Vince. Yeah, and when you're down 33, it's not too much um, if you make it. Okay, the Geigel's starting to exit right now with 2.35 left. Simon Gratz leads Redding 57 to 24, and we have a foul under the basket. I think the crowd's just really sick of seeing the fouls committed over and over and over again. Renwick, John Renwick, as you talked about, is getting ready to check into the game for Hassan Walker. Here comes Renwick. So we have probably the, the two people that are the future of running high basketball, John Renwick and Damon Harris. But again, running a young team, they're bringing everybody back next year except Jonte Richardson. That's right, Chris. And Marvin Encarnacion, excuse me, Vince. Expect, yeah, Marvin is a junior with senior eligibility in basketball. Expect them to have a very strong team next year with Renwick and Harris ready to step up and take Shante Richardson and Marvin Encarnacion's roles. And Turner with a strong foul shooting performance tonight as number 20 Brian Samuels checks in for him. This whole Simon Gratz team has been solid all yeah, night. Yeah, Chris, it's so deep. I mean, but this is the kind of playing that Redding's gonna have to come to when it gets the districts like Harrisburg and Steelton. Teams like that are deep, and this is maybe not this deep, not this good, but they're deep teams. This is a good test. This is a good game to put on your schedule. I mean, not just the publicity, but like you said. There's a three-pointer by Charlie Randall. Charlie Randall for three. Like I was saying, Vince, to put them on your schedule, when it comes to district play, they'll be prepared for this type of pressure, and it won't be as intense as this. And number four, Blunt. Mike Blunt makes the three-pointer. So Charlie Randall has nine points tonight, so that's a pretty strong performance from him. Damon Harris controls. Encarnacion, double team, hounded. <laughs> Getting raped out there, Vince. Yeah, he really got raked at the arm and but at this point, and I don't think the refs are going to call too many of those. That was 147 left, and Simon Gratz up 62 to 27. Probably won't get too many fouls called. They just want to get this game over with and get out of here. I just commend Redding's effort tonight. They played. They played tough. Yeah, they really did. Damon Harris off the mark. Gratz controls. Mike Blunt. And Michael Blunt, and he's fouled also. So an, a really tough shot for Blunt to make that shot after being fouled by Harris. I mean, excuse me, he was fouled by Renwick. And he made the jump shot. Usually you see those layups made with the foul and the harm. Blunt will shoot one. He looks. Cox fires, kaboom, count it. Simon Gratz, 116 left, leads Redding, 65-27. Renwick controls. Oh, Carnacion over to Harris. Randall. Randall for three. Off the mark. Here comes Blunt. Inside. There's he a travel. The slam. He wanted to slam so bad he forgot to take that little dribble to get to the basket and jam it home. And that's a travel. Nice defense by Redding to get back in time to stop that slam. Yeah, as I said, they don't like to be slammed on, Chris. Even though this Redding High fans, that's what they're waiting around for, maybe to see one or two more slams. They don't like to be slammed on. Damon Harris, Renwick for three, off the mark. And that's going to stay running ball off of Michael Blunt. Good play by Jason Klein to knock the ball off Mike Blunt. Harris controls over to Encarnacion. Renwick. Harris controls. Randall open down inside to Klein. So really Redding just has to be looking forward to seeing Muhlenberg Tuesday night, Chris, and coming up with an important win there. Yeah, I think, I think they're come out fired up from Muhlenberg on Tuesday after tonight. 
Yeah, I mean, this is just a, a really good performance by Reading against the great Simon Gratz team, which I expect to win the the whole state and the national title. So I'm hoping to see them get very far because this is just an outstanding team. This is an outstanding. This is one of Whoa! Showtime, showtime baby. baby! Oh, my God. Leonard Stewart with the authoritative alley-oop jam off the miss. And that'll be all she wrote. And that's the end of the ball game. Simon a Gratz very nice way to end the, end the game as Simon and Gratz defeat the Reading High Red Knights 67 to 27. A 40 point victory, but really Reading can't be disappointed with the way they played. They played a very good game. I would have to say, Chris, Mike Miller can't be disappointed. He played. Mike Miller cannot be disappointed, Vince. They played tough, and we have the scoring statistics for both teams. Vince, should I kick it off tonight? Start it, baby. Okay, for Reading, Hassan Walker had seven points. Charlie Randall led Reading with nine points. Reed Crick had three. Robbie Pollard had two. Let's talk a little bit about Pollard and his injury, Vince. That's a tough two points earned by Pollard. He, he courageous just to play tonight. Yeah, Chris, I mean, that just shows a lot of heart for him to come out under these circumstances. The ankle he did break before the season started. He comes out and has a two-point performance against the number one team in the nation. I think they're really saving him for the league play, which they really need, Chris, because they're behind Wilson a game, and that's very important for Mike Miller to win his sixth straight. Okay, Marvin Encarnacion added two. And Sean Tay Richardson added two, and that's 27 points, and that wraps up the Reading scoring. Now Vinny Vital Natal has the Simon Gratz scoring scene. Well, leading Simon Gratz, as is always, Rondell Turner leads with 17 points. His average is 17.4, so he maintained a very good average. Rashid Wallace added 15. Jamal Redmond had 10. Leonard Stewart had 9. Sean Smith also had 10. Terrell Stokes had seven. Mike Blunt had six. Uh, Alim Watson had two. That'll wrap up the scoring for Simon and Gratz. Mitch, Foot Locker player of the game. Now you go first this time, buddy. Well, Chris, I'm going to have to go with the number one player in the nation, Rashid Wallace. He just proved himself to me that he's a great player, he, and I think he is the number one player in the nation, according to everybody who said so. Vince, I have to agree with you. The number, uh, number one player in the nation, my Foot Locker player of the game tonight. Rashi Wallace, and I'd just like to commend for Reading. Charlie Randall had a nice game tonight, Vince. Yeah, Chris, I mean, a lot of people underrate Charlie Randall. He had nine points. He can shoot the ball, Chris. Everybody, I think, thinks that Robbie Pollard will have to do everything for the Red Knights, and he really doesn't. No. Charlie Randall's a really nice role player. He fills his role nicely in taking the outside jumper, and he has a few moves inside. No. Not, I wouldn't just. I just want to commend the whole running team. I mean, it's tough playing the number one team in the nation. How much can you expect? They played tough for 32 minutes, and you have to commend them for that. Yeah, Chris. They even had the lead 5-4 for a little bit before the game. Before in the beginning of the game, the first four minutes, you really got to commend the way Reading played. They have a lot of heart. This team, and I think that they played maybe the best they did all season tonight, just because. They're playing the number one team in the nation. If they play like this against the other team in the county, Chris, I think they defeat them and defeat them badly. Yep, and coming up they have Muhlenberg on Tuesday and a big, 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 big time game on Friday night as the Wilson Bulldogs come into town. Yeah, they're really hungry for Wilson. Their only loss of the season in the league by the Red Knights to the Wilson Bulldogs over in Wilson. Shane Stafford had an awesome night shutting down Robbie Pollard, but Pollard looking for revenge. He's going to rest that ankle, and I think they'll be ready. I think they'll be ready, too. Wilson's going to have their hands full. Definite possibility of an extra playoff game, Vince. If Reading wins on Friday night, they'll be 7-1. and one. I think Wilson would be 7-1, and one, so... I don't, I don't know how the system exactly works, but there could be an extra game for the Division the Division One championship. Yeah, it also depends on the game they play before it. Right now, Wilson is six and one. The, um, Wilson is six and zero in the league, and Reading is five and one. So it's all going to depend on. It comes down to that that first game they play before each other, and the game they play against each That's other. That's true because Mifflin, Mifflin, also in Division One, could make could could pull off an upset. They don't have a bad team. No, they don't. Okay, that's about it from the Geigel. Our final score tonight, 67 to 27. The number one team in the nation with the number one recruit, Washi Wallace, Simon Gratz, has defeated Reading. Again, 67 to 27. 
For Vince Natal, I'm Chris Shelmer. Good night from the Geigle.